the sandpaper letters. Um, and um, so I have, whoop. these are just the ones my son have, to, we're in the middle of them right now. So I, <laughs> I didn't want to mix them up, the ones we haven't done versus the ones we've done. So we've done most of them and we've got these ones left to do um, for the single letter sets. So um, let me first explain what these are. Um, let me grab, let me grab, see if I can find A for you. Here it is. Here's A. So again, use the phonetic sounds. Do not call this A. It is A. Um, so you would introduce these in a three-part lesson, um, maybe starting with two or three maximum. Um, and I like to start with um, a vowel and a consonant. And I usually start with um, the first sound or letter of my child's name. Um, so my son's name starts with T. Um, so I, I started with him with A and T. Um, and um, I have talked about three-part lessons and demonstrated them in other videos, um, but I'm, I, it's a very important part of the Montessori method, so I'm going to do it again. Um, so let's say we have both of these out on a work rug. I'm going to tell him this says T. And then we're going to trace it and say t, t, t. And again, this is this is sandpaper. It's very tactile. Um, and I will often hold their hands at first um, to I demonstrate and I, I hold their hands at first because I find that they have difficulty. Um, they have a tendency to push down really hard and that's really difficult to do. Um, so it's helpful to help them at first until they get the hang of it. Um, but so we, we've we've said this is t and we've traced it and said it. And then we're going to do this one. This one says ah, ah, ah. And that's the first part of the lesson. You're just telling them what it is. You're introducing it with the same paper letters. We'd like to trace it. This is also an introductory, introduction to writing, um, but I'm not going to talk about writing much today. Um, focusing on reading. It just it also just gives them that tactile sense that some children really need. You could also go ahead and do it in the air. Ah, ah. Um, that is something I do later with my kids. But if you have kids that you find need more movement initially, that is something you could do initially. Um, part two of the three-part lesson is I have these out and I want them to find the right one. So which one is ah? Show me ah. And which one is t? Show me t. And then we play some games with it. I might hide them around the room and have them find them. Um, I might say, can you put t on my head? And can you, um, can you run to the other side of the room and back with ah. Um, and so that's part two. You want them to be able to recognize it when you say it. And then part three um, is, what does this say? And hopefully they say t. Um, and what does this say? And hopefully it's ah. Um, so usually I do try to do all three parts of this letter in one day. If they are having difficulty, you just go back to the first part and tell them what it is again. And if they don't seem to be getting it, they might not be ready. Um, so you just put it away and take it out another day until they seem ready. And once they can do all three parts with these two on another day, you bring out some more. So um, this is not necessarily the order I do it in. This is kind of a tricky one, but this is, f and this is, let's see. So um, now, one thing um, that I'm doing differently with my son that I did with my daughter. In my booklet here, my Dwyer booklet, she actually suggests introducing single letter um, phonograms and as well as double letter phonograms, kind of interspersing them. So you start with some single letter ones and then start interspersing um, the double letter ones such as or uh, the good one. E. Um, and so I have the sandpaper letters for this as well. Um, and that's what I do with my daughter. It worked okay with her. She actually did, um, she was very solid with all the single letter phonograms and most of the double letter phonograms. Um, with my son though, partially because he had the speech delay, but partially just because of how things ended up progressing with my daughter, um, I am just starting him on the single letter phonograms and then I will go to the double letter phonograms while we keep reinforcing the single letters. Now, I think part of the problem was when we started getting to a stage where we were reading um, little books, um, 
not as many of the double letter phonograms were used and so therefore they just didn't get practiced as much as the single letter um, and so I think that's one of the reasons she retained a few of them but it had a harder time retaining them than she did the single letter phonograms and so um, that's just something I kept in mind for this time I'm just trying it a little bit differently and seeing if if maybe that um, works a little smoother and better um, I think you could just use your judgment I think either way could be fine that's the sandpaper letters and as you're introducing these letters um, I also like to play some fun games and and Montessori teachers will do this as well um, I was able to make some of my own materials um, for specifically for like geared towards my children that they've enjoyed as well um, so I'm gonna share some of the activities that we've done um, to just kind of practice and reinforce the sounds made by the letters so some really easy things that you can do just using the sandpaper letters you don't need to make or do anything else um, and some of these my sister um, uses in her classroom as well or did when she was in primary um, this I did not think was gonna work as well but they love this so you put take the ones that they know or maybe just a subset of them if they know a lot and you put them face down not in a pile but all around on a work rug and this is called the knock knock game you have them knock who's there and they have to turn it over and tell you that's and for some reason this is just like the most fun thing ever I was unexpected to me but the knock knock game is one another is I like to put them around the room sometimes I'll have the child that's not working on it put them around the room um, and then we can either um, usually I'll call them out and have them have my son or my it was my daughter at the time but I'll have you know whichever child I'm working with um, go go get that letter so let's say go find huh um, again always using the phonetic sounds I haven't even started teaching them the letter names at this point um, just want to make that very very clear um, uh, so those are just some fun games that you can do just with those alone um, I recently I will insert a clip here uh, my son loves construction and so I had him bring up his dump truck we set up two work rugs and on one I put out all the, the letters that he knew and the other we called the work zone and he had to bring the letter that I said to the work zone um, and so that's just another way it's just a way of practicing recognizing letters and um, as he went along I also threw in a what is this one can you take this one so that some of the ones that I knew that he knew better that we were just um, doing that third step in the three-part lesson as well um, now I'm gonna show you some things that I've created to practice this is one that I didn't necessarily create I think Montessori classrooms might do this as well um, but is just taking uh, let's see if I can find one that's in here um, taking one of the letters or I actually usually do it with two or three and putting some sound objects together um, in a basket or bin and having them sort the sound objects by um, you could do ending sounds with, I, I've been doing starting sounds with my son um, you could make it ending sounds you could do a variety of things but this is stamped so it goes with right so um, that's that's another way to practice and make that connection that my kids have loved um, I have taken that and kind of made a couple variations on it this one um, I just found and printed these little black lines of trains and I laminated them and so I use dry erase markers so I can switch it up depending on what um, so each week I try to switch this one up um, highlighting either some new sounds we've introduced or ones that have been trickier for him um, and it come and I put it with this little basket of sound objects and he has to put the uh, correct sound objects on the correct train so um, for example it's a little carton of milk and so he's looking for the mm train um, and he will put them out and put those on there so he really enjoys this um, he often wants me to switch it up more than once a week um, just the amount of stuff I have to do I, I try to just keep it to to once a week um, <laughs> but we do other things too um, another variation on that variation <laughs> is um, one I haven't done with my son yet because um, I'm waiting until I introduce a few more sounds but um, I have these this bigger train um, with cars but I have some sounds here you'll see this one says n this one says d so yes yeah, so these have letters and these letters actually or these sounds correspond to um, names of people in our family and so what I did 
was I actually printed out and laminated these tiny pictures of members of our family. And I'll have to make some new ones because this was um, my son. I believe there's a picture of him in here, but he was tiny because this, this I made for my daughter. So I might, I might make some new ones um, in here as well. There's my daughter's little picture. Her name starts with K, and so she'd have to put her picture there. This is my picture, so they'd have to put it with the M for mommy on, on each of the cards. Um, so you kind of see it's kind of a, a different um, but fun variation. My daughter really liked that. I have to kind of reset it um, for my son. He saw me taking some of this material out to show you guys, and he, he really wants to do it. So um, I just want to introduce a couple more letters to him of, of some uh, from some of our family members, and then we'll do that. Um, for the double letter sounds to review them, my daughter at the time was obsessed with dinosaurs. She still kind of loves dinosaurs. And I made these, um, I, I printed out these dinosaur cards with ones that started with different sounds. They may not be spelled like this. Like this is, uh, I wrote on the back, that's helpful. Ankylosaurus, which does not start with A-I, it starts with just A, but it, may, it starts with the sound A-A, which, um, that we I teach as AI. So we got this, we've got th this is um Therizinosaurus, this is Quantosaurus, I think. Um Eoraptor for E and Archaeopteryx. Anyways, dinosaurs and I guess it's a prehistoric bird. Um <laughs> and then I got little egg shaped things and I put the sounds there and they had to match the eggs. Um, or she had to match the eggs to the correct dinosaur or prehistoric bird um, there. So it's just another way of recognizing the sounds. And I'd have her talk it out to me while we were doing it as well. Um, so that's another kind of fun, very um, fun way to practice. Um, let me grab a few more things to show you. Okay, another fun activity that my kids have liked is I just made bugs with the letter sounds on them. It's a little... Um, says ah and we put them out on the work rug and I give them a fly swatter and I call out a letter sound and they have to hit that sound or that bug with the, the fly swatter they really like that one um, it can get a little violent so I don't take it out super often um, but that is definitely a favorite around here um, another thing that I created is bingo so I made these, um, I had to find, I will see if I can figure out what font it was. I can't remember right now, um, but I found a, a basic cursive font um, and I made a bunch of these. I think I used a random like generator online. It's got stuff on it right now, but um, to help me figure out what's gonna go on which board. I made a bunch of different boards so we could play it with a bunch of people and lots of times and whatnot. Um, and then it comes with a little cards so you have to call out the sound and then um, you get little counters or whatever um, um, I have various little things all over the house for practical life and other things so we just choose one and you know cover them up and I, and I would try to make them cover everything up instead of getting like four in a row or whatever um, just because it's more practice that way and I also made a set for the double letter sounds um, and I did try to coordinate you'll notice our sandpaper letters for the double letter sounds are green and um, the consonants are pink and the vowels are blue for the single letter, so I made the other one pink. So that's something I made. Um, you could, if you're using print, you don't have to make them. You can find versions of these printables online. I just really wanted them in cursive, and so I decided to make my own. Um, it, it maybe took me like an evening. Um, so I, I think it was a good investment. We used them quite a bit with my daughter. Um, and we're almost at the point where we can use the single letter ones with my son. Along the same lines of just making a game out of it, um, I found these printable board game templates online. This one is from mominspiredlife.com and this one is from raisingaselfreliantchild.com. And I, I obviously put, I put single letter sounds, um, single letter ones in this one and uh, double letter phonographs in this one. And um, we just got um, a die. Um, I had one that just had the numbers instead of the dots on them. 
Um, so it was also practice reading the numbers at the time. Um, and we'd roll and we'd use like pom-poms or something to move ahead. And um, what I had her do is, um, when we were doing this, is you had to say what the sound was. So let's say we roll three. One, two, three. Um, we landed on huh. So I'd have to say this is huh, and I'd have to come up with a word that has huh in it. Um, so I might say horse. Um, and if you can't come up, if you don't get the right sound or you don't um, come up with the word, you have to go back. Um, so that was that game. Um, and uh, that's another, it's just a really good way to review. Um, and I'm sure that there are so many more ideas. So um, go online, find what you can find, all, all the number, um, number. Um, so just, you know, I, you could go on Pinterest and um, find, you know, letter games and sound games and all that. And, and it's kind of, I don't know if I did that specifically for any of these, but um, it's always a source of information, inspiration for me, so it could be. Um, but hopefully this gave you some ideas on how to review those sounds and you really want to, um, you know, you want them to recognize it. And again, follow them. Um, it might take them, you know, a couple weeks. The, the booklet says if they've had a really strong, solid foundation, that they could know all the sandpaper letters in three weeks. Um, that has not been my experience with either of my children. Um, but I, if you have an older child or one who is particularly advanced or both, that might be the case. Um, I prefer to take my time and make sure they really have the concept. Um, but also if they seem like they're getting bored, move on, keep going. Um, and that is, I think that is step number three. So I went from sandpaper letters and um, learning all of the symbols really is what they are. The letters are for the 40 English sounds.